Yes, hello everyone and welcome to all our West Australian football fans to another edition of Around the Waffle, your go-to WAFL podcast in season 2024. It's our special Anzac Day edition, of course, one of the favourite times for all football fans, Anzac Day football, and of course, tonight, it is going to be a big one, the beginning of round five. We're going to preview that game, Perth versus East Perth, that is uh, taking place tonight. We'll also be speaking to Ross McQueen, the East Perth coach, our first coach of the season. But first of all, first of all let me introduce you to my talented co-host, Ethan Roth. Rothy. What a great time it is for footy fans. Anzac Day weekend, paying tribute to those that have sacrificed their lives for the uh, freedom of our country. But also, of course, great time for football fans because Anzac Day footy is back again. Yeah, it would be great if we can make this more of a rivalry and a regular fixture in the waffle. So, uh, yeah, as you said, great opportunity to celebrate, uh, to you know, um, remember those who, who served our country in the, in the forum of footy. So Absolutely. It's a great form to uh, remember and, of course, to have a great time as well. And it'll be a great time on the Anzac Day weekend, no doubt about it. Three games. We're going to preview those uh, on today's show on your podcast provider and on Around the Waffle's YouTube channel. So stay with us. First of all, here's how you can win-win big this weekend in the Waffle. Punt from 50, win. Little too into the game, win. Too cocky, nah, almost a win. Risking it all for the glory, win. It's win-win at the Waffle. Great footy, food and entertainment. Find out more at waffle.com.au. All right. Win-win big at the WAFL, and it's going to be a couple of big win-wins for these teams if they can get on the board. Perth and East Perth, of course, they take on each other tonight in the Anzac Day Clash at Mineral Resources Park. It's going to be a day-night game, and it's no doubt going to be an absolute ripper. East Perth, no doubt, uh, two and one. They want to get back into uh, that winning trail once again, and joining us now is the coach of East Perth, the first coach that we've got for the 2024 season, Ross McQueen. He's good enough to join us here on the show. Hello, Ross. How are you? Good, thanks, Paul. How are you going? Going very well. Great to have you here on the show. East Perth, back from the bye, and of course, 2-1 and one after the first three games. Uh, no doubt, during that week off, the boys uh, would have done a little bit of uh, lesson learning following the game against Peel Thunder, because that, that was a pretty tough one out there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I feel a very good side, and obviously, we were in the game for a long time and, and didn't quite get the job done in the end, so we had a review on Monday, we trained on Tuesday, then we gave the boys a few days off just to try and freshen up, obviously, with the big challenge tonight of uh, going to the Perth game. And, you know, up against a very uh, strong Perth unit later on today, uh, the midfield depth, that must be a, a big key for you and a big focus? Uh, yeah, like, I think it'd be a great challenge in there. Like, Perth have recruited well and developed some of their, their young blokes really well. Uh, they're playing three or four of their Colts boys from last year's finals, and uh, they've got a few stalwarts, and I guess they called guys like Corey Byrne and um, you know, Clark, Regan Clark and these sort of guys. So we're expecting our mids and their mids should be a really good battle. There was one, one question following the uh, Peel Thunder game. Of course, Nicholas Robinson uh, suffered an injury early on. How far off do you think he is from returning? Oh, no, Nick's a way off. He, uh, yeah, in the first three or five minutes, went for a spoil and uh, um, hurt a hamstring. So he's probably going to miss a good six to 12 weeks, Nick. So uh, Nick will be out for a while. So we'll have to try and find a spot to, we've got someone to, take his role today and, um, yeah, hopefully he can fill it, uh, get the job done for us. Speedy re- recovery for Nick, uh, hopefully. But uh, Scott Jones in the ruck, he's been vital. Obviously missed a, a big chunk last year. Uh, you know, how, how important has he been back and fit and healthy? Yeah, no, Scott's obviously very much um, well, he's part of our leadership group as well. So Scott's been around the club a while. Uh, got himself really fit. Really important to our playing group. We're very fortunate at the moment. We've got probably got himself, him and um, Jed Edwards, who who took over from Scott last year, and unfortunately at the same time last year he got injured a little bit himself. But Scott's a, a key to our, our group. Like I said, a leader, uh, helps set up our um, midfield with the, the senior blokes that are in there, but also a few of the young blokes around the club is very good at giving direction and trying to bring them along for the journey as well. The on-ball brigade as well, along with Scotty Jones and the Ruck, uh, accompanied by Hamish Brayshaw, Mitch Crowden and company, that will be a very important uh, role for uh, East Perth to play in, especially on a ground where it's always very difficult to get the best out of the best out of your sides that quickly under lights, you know, no less than a twilight game. Yeah, look, um, in, in the last couple of years, we've been very fortunate. We've had, had really strong starts against 
um, the Perth boys, and I obviously think that that'll be um, a focus for them, not, not to let us get away. Like our, our guys have got on top early, which um, makes it hard. And a place like Minerals, it's um, especially when the lights come on, it seems to move pretty quickly. So I, I would see Perth really putting up a, a strong focus on the first quarter. Um, but for our guys, exactly that. We we, we know at the contest, you get the ball in your hands going your way. It's far easier to play in your front half than trying to transition the ball from their back half all day. What about, uh, of course, uh, the forwards as well, especially Sam Van Diemen. I uh, always love watching him uh, play inside that forward 50, kicking a few spectacular goals. He's got a big role to play. Yep, Sam has. Like He, he really built into his um, season last year. He had a terrific season, so his challenge now is to, to back that up. Probably uh, a little quieter the first game or so for Sam's standards, but um, felt against Peel, he really grew back into uh, into his role and what he brings to our group. And like I said, we've got a... Um, We've got, got a front half and not a lot of people would know a lot about, but they, they find a way to kick a goal. So it's important for us to take the opportunities when they come because some games you just don't get too many. And if you're, um, pretty cliche football, but you, you've got to take your chances. Otherwise, the oppo, when they get the momentum, there's every chance they will. What a game it's going to be tonight over at Mineral Resources Park, the Anzac Day Clash against Perth. All the best to the Royals, Ross. We really appreciate your time. All the best for the, uh, this game and the rest of the season. Cheers, Ross. Cheers, Paul. No worries, guys. Thanks very much for the call. That was Ross McQueen, the coach of the East Perth Football Club, joining us ahead of what is going to be a huge game tonight, Ethan. It's going to be an absolute ripper. It's going to have everything, of course, uh, great action, of course, great tributes as well to those that have uh, sacrificed their lives for the freedom of our country, Anzac Day. And also, not just that, also, Waffle Wonderland is back. G'day, Barry here. This Anzac Day, watch the Demons and the Royals at Lath Lane. Free entry for RSLWA members. It's Waffle Footy with a wonderland of food trucks, giveaways, DJ and kids activities. Tickets at waffle.com.au. Waffle Wonderland, of course, heading to Mineral Resources Park, and that's a, that's a great thing as well. Free entry for the for RSL members as well, so that's a, a great uh, a reward of support for our great RSL members all around West Australia and around the nation. Fantastic occasion all around, and yeah, Ross, uh, obviously a couple of years into the role now, so I think he's feeling pretty settled and uh, really clear on on the direction. And uh, yeah, no doubt uh, East Perth is is uh, more than a chance tonight, as we'll cover. It will be a fascinating game. Let's get to the game previews now on Around the Waffle, your go to WA. AFL podcast. Let's begin with tonight. Thursday football, Anzac Day football, one of the great occasions in football. Perth and East Perth at Mineral Resources Park in Lath Lane at 4.10. Anzac Day footy under lights and Perth's record at home as well. A big talking point heading into this game as well. Perth have won their first two games at home. Would you re- would you think that they would be a chance against a strong East Perth midfield? There's certainly a chance. I think the fact they're playing at home helps. They've made a little bit of a fortress in the early parts of the season and uh, they just love playing under lights. It seems Perth under lights proves wonders. So uh, they'll be looking to continue that. Um, really looking forward to the midfield battle as we covered on with, with Ross. Brayshaw versus Constable. They're best mates, really. Yeah. Uh, it's been pretty well uh, documented. So they're going to have to put their friendship to the side for, for tonight and, uh, you know, leave no stone unturned. While there's many factors that could decide this game, I reckon that's going to be the marquee matchup that could go one team's way or the other. You know, who's going to be the more impactful out of those two? Their housemates as well. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's going to be, they're two big body midfielders, obviously Constable with his, his experience and, you know, his uh, the way he started the year in Brayshaw, the reigning standard of a medalist who had a little bit of a delayed start to the year, but um, he's picked up the pace pretty well. So, yeah, um, you know, the Royals probably contain more goal-kicking midfielders as well on, on the stretch. So uh, that'll be a challenge for Perth. But plenty of contested footy. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a midfield battle all around. I, th- I think it's going to be down to who has the greater depth as far as goal-kicking mids are concerned. Perth, they're still trying to figure out who can penetrate the goals from midfield. East Perth, they've got the likes of Brayshaw. They've got Crowden. They've even got, you know, Scotty Jones can uh, kick the odd goal here and there. So too Angus Scott. So uh, I reckon Perth are going to find it a bit of a challenge, but also the back line as well. You know, you talk about the likes of Clark, Caniglio as well, who can play in midfield and shift down back as well. Uh, uh, Davis as well, who can uh, be a real prominent defender for Perth. Also up forward, uh, Sam Stubbs, uh, also a couple of the uh, other forwards as well. I think Perth's depth is going to really face the litmus test tonight against East Perth, who have got class, composure, and they've got aggression all around the ground. So it's not going to be an easy game for Perth. No, uh, it, it won't be. You hit the nail on the head there. And, yeah, I think um, all, all sort of points lead to at the best. East Perth probably should win this game, but, uh, you know, you never know. 
you never know in this game. So. Well, of course, East Perth have had the wood over Perth uh, in the last five. They've won their last five, dating back to round 18, 2021, and East Perth averaged four more goals than Perth so far this season. And, uh, you know, having a look at this, they're also accurate in front of goal by 16% more than the Demons, 59% to 43%. So, uh, you know, looking at that, you'd be expecting an East Perth win. But, uh, you know, Perth, they've got this great thing at home when they play under lights and their loyal supporters turn up. They just get spurred on, you know. Think about, of course, uh, their uh, their current coach uh, f- for the Perth Demons. I reckon uh, he's going to be in for one big day as well. It's going to be one of history for the Demons. Peter German, yeah, he'll be he'll be looking for the, forward to the clash. But uh, yeah, you know, it's going to come down to you know Aaron Clark's been very reliable for the he Perth has. Demons, and that's no problem because that's why they recruited him and, and brought him over. But if he gets shut down, who is going to step up for Perth and hit the scoreboard? Because that's my main concern. That's you know, my main concern. Their forward line depth, Perth's lacking it. In, 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 in to an extent, East Perth have just got a little bit more. Yeah, and, you know, Aaron Clark, he's probably kicked two or three goals each week, and that's probably only just gotten over the line sort of in, in their win. So, you know, if he sort of isn't able to live up to those standards, because we can't expect him every single week, you know, you're going to have an off day here and there. So who else is it, is it going to be? With you know, that in stubs, mind. you know, yeah. is, you know, looking to regain the form that he showed last year. Yeah, absolutely. He had a bit of a spell in reserves and, uh, you know, he's really keen to uh, get back into that top league form and kick a big bag of goals. With that in mind, who takes out the game tonight? I think East Perth. I'll say East Perth yeah. as well by about four or five goals. Perth will be competitive, but uh, East Perth, just too much depth in the end. That is, of course, tonight, the Anzac Day game at Lathlane. What about this one, Ethan? On Saturday, of course, not only that game's on the AFL app, as is all games in the WAFL for 2024, this game is live on Channel 7, Pentanet Stadium in Joondalup, fourth versus third on the ladder. West Perth, South Fremantle. This one's going to be an absorbing contest. Third be fourth on the ladder, so yeah, it's uh, it's shaping up to be a, a beauty. Uh, South Fremantle making the big trip to, to Joondalup to face the Falcons, so probably an informed team, to be honest, West oh, Perth I would say at this so, stage. Yeah. yeah, well, both teams are, are in pretty good form. I mean, obviously, sharing a pretty good record to start the season. West Perth coming off the loss to Subiaco a couple of weeks ago. South Fremantle, big win over Claremont uh, in in terms of you know the confidence in the team, the young players as well, bolstered by that big win, uh, one point win over Claremont. But also, you know, when you talk about the battle between these two teams, it's going to be the forward lines that could be really telling as well. You know, you've got the likes of uh, Winder and also Schleuth to an extent, Donaldson in that forward line for South Fremantle. And for West Perth, you've got Keitel and you've got Jasper Scaife, who's been a real revelation inside that 50 for West Perth. So that could be a huge battle in this game on Saturday. Yeah, I know I keep harping on about it, but this could genuinely be one of Scaife's last couple of games. But for West Perth, I think is a massive shot for the mid-season draft. So... Uh, yeah, let's hope it's a, a down to the wire classic. Sloith, you mentioned him there. He's reckoning against West Perth. That, that's uh, he loves playing against he him. Does. He loves playing against him. He gets a lot of the football uh, in in those games against West Perth. Averages over twenty uh, against West Perth. So he's been absolutely sensational. Uh, West Perth and South Fremantle. They've exchanged wins, but of course they had a draw in twenty twenty two. So that. they're no, yeah. no no stranger of putting on some uh, close games over there. I remember that game. That was my first game uh, riding uh, for the Sunday Times. I think it was, and uh, to have a draw. And let me tell you, that was that's no better it, debut, yeah, eh? It was uh, it was quite a task. Let me say it. <laughs> no no doubt about it. No doubt about that. But uh, South Fremantle and uh, looking at uh, South Fremantle and West Perth as well, uh, they're, pr- they're pretty much even in the kicks uh, and also in the marks as well. South Fremantle have got 11 more marks on average than West Perth. They've got some good marking players at both ends of the ground. West Perth, they've got a little bit more run and carry through that midfield as well. You know, you've got the likes of Aaron Black, the Nelson boys, of course, Joseph Hinder as well. Uh, Connor West, who's having a great season with West Perth. He's continuing to blossom. I reckon Connor West uh, maybe could be the one in midfield that South Fremantle will need to have eyes at the back of their head for. Mm, they do. And, you know, if one doesn't get yeah, then the other will. You mentioned the Nelson boys there, Black. Uh, Luke you know, Meadows as well. Meadows, yeah. The list does go on. So uh, you mentioned uh, the the Bulldogs sort of marking ability. I think if they can use that down back, you know, intercept marks, they really need to shut down those forwards. The Bulldogs back line, you know, are going to face that big test. If those uh, marking backs can really shut down the likes of Knott, Keitel and Jasper Scaife in that game on Saturday, that's going to go a long way. You'd ought to restrict them to about seven or eight goals. You've got to restrict West Perth to seven or eight goals. If you don't do that, West Perth are just going to go on a scoring spree. We saw that against Claremont in round one, again against Perth in round two. We didn't see that against Subiaco in 
round three because they were inaccurate in front of goal. That's another concern. They've really got to improve on their kicking accuracy after that loss to Subiaco a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and, you know, South Roman will play on a wider ground at, at Joondalup. That'll be a little bit of a test for them, obviously a, a much different ground to, to South Freo. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's certainly, um, you know, we can probably see on the fence to a degree on this one and make a case for both teams yeah. based on their recent form. There is, a, there is a good case for both teams to take out this game. South Fremantle, good depth up forward, also in the midfield. The only drawback is is their back line. You know, that's going to face a really big test. West Perth, their drawback, inaccuracy in front of goal. That cost them two weeks ago, but they've got depth everywhere around the ground. But they were missing four premiership stars in that game against Subiaco. So whether they return on Saturday is going to be a big question. Tristan Hobley, of course, he had work commitments, so he couldn't play. Now, Pegararo, amongst a few others, were injured as well. So should all of them return in that game on Saturday, that will be a huge boost for the Falcons. It will be. And can I just say as well, the Strom boys, you know, uh, Noah, Zach, you know, they sort of play either end of the yeah. ground. They can use them up, up the ground and that. So you mentioned South Carolina's defense. I think one of them, probably uh, Noah Strom, probably has to play more back and support them because I know there's that temptation to put him up the ground because mm. he's so agile, so flexible. I reckon Zach Strom would be that better suited up forward. Okay. Yeah. I reckon so. I mean, look at his performance the, uh, the other week. He kicked five goals. If one, Str- if one Strom doesn't get the goals, then one certainly will. And yeah. that's Zach Strom. I mean, I reckon he could be suited to that forward line. Put Noah down back, increase that marking prowess in the 50. Mm, and, you know, they can. I feel like they can play anywhere. You know, they're mm. sort of like a Mark Blitz stars of, of the waffle. They can probably play in the midfield, have a chop out there. So that temptation would be there from a coaching point, no doubt. Tough game to pick this one. It's going to be a ripper. Who wins? I think West Perth at, at home get the job done. I'm actually going the Bulldogs. Ooh, that's an, okay. I'm, go, I'm going the Bulldogs. I'm, I'm tipping a Bulldogs upset. I like their form. Hayden Schloith loves playing against West Perth. The thing I'm concerned about with West Perth, even though their forward line is potent, they've got to be accurate in front of goal. And they've got to really count on the likes of Schloith, Dragovic, and Florenka to watch out for. If that midfield gets first the ball, show their desperation that they did against Claremont. I reckon they could get the job done here. They got off to a great start against the Tigers, and that could be vital for them. If they get off to a good start against West Perth, then that'll go a long way to victory. I'll say South Fremantle only by about a goal or two. It'll be yeah. a beauty. It's a good point you make. You know, there's no point getting down to your forward line if you can't make it pay on the scoreboard. So. Absolutely. It should be an absorbing contest, that one, in Joondalup, West Perth and South Fremantle. <laughs> And the third and final game for Anzac Round on the Sunday at half past two at Steel Blue Oval in Bassendine. It is Swan Districts in front of their loyal supporters and the Can Bar over there against the reigning Premier's East Fremantle who will be seething and looking to bounce back after that shock loss to the West Coast Eagles. This one takes on a new importance now with that, off, with that aforementioned result. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, no mercy for East Roman. It's probably been a long week for them having to think. It's a long you know, fortnight. You know, <laughs> long fortnight with that Eagles um, loss probably hindering over them. So, uh, yes, one district's on the rebound. Uh, I question, I'm sort of, you know, we've touched on it before, but Johnny Marsh, will he play? That's going to be a big question. Of course, he pulled out of that uh, West Coast Eagles game with uh, a hamstring injury. Question is, will he return? Still a big question mark surrounding him. But I think when John O'Marsh was out of that game, I think that forward line wasn't really as potent, even though they did score 14 goals in that four-point loss. You know, they missed that added spark in that forward line. I mean, you go back to round two, and when John O'Marsh kicked a big bag of seven, and that single-handedly took the game right out of Claremont, it's that potency at that forward line East Fremantle need to execute in that game against the Swans. And if they can do that, then, you know, that'll bring East Fremantle right back up to prominence. I said this on Tab Radio um, on the Wednesday following round three, that uh, East Fremantle were very ordinary. I mean, they expected things to happen, and it didn't. They need to work for those things to happen. And in no tougher environment to do that against the Swans at Steel Blue Oval. They've got to really pull their finger out and get it together. Yeah, and, you know, Milan Murdoch, he might need to be tagged as well for, for Swan District. So. But the question is, who's going to? Yeah, because you, know. you look at Jesse Turner, you know, I've said in the past, he's got a great balance between stopping his opposing player, but then grabbing the footy himself. So he could be an option. But, yeah, who, who is it, you know? There's going to be a lot of questions about who's going to tag Milan. You know, is it going to be is it going to be Turner? Is it going to be Rokar? Is it going to be Pina as well? You know, he's a very versatile player. Can he shut down Milan Murdoch? You know, that's going to be a huge question come uh, Sunday afternoon. But also, it's going to be so important to see who puts on more physical pressure around the football because both sides like to get physical. And I reckon if the Swans can shut them down because the East Fremantle side are usually a good running side across the ground, the likes of Murdoch, 
English, Joyce and Co. are really good when they get that run and carry going from the centre clearance. So that's going to be a real tough one. If Swan Districts want to stop East Fremantle's running game, they've got to put on physical pressure from go to woe. It's a leg speed right across the ground as well. You look at Jed Hagen as yeah. well, live wire inside the 50. He's just bobbed up and come back from the sand full uh, beautifully. Probably better than they expected And internally. Fraser Turner as well. You know, he's uh, obviously in his second season. Right? He's going to be a huge key as well. He's averaging over 25 possessions so far. Mm, yeah, Turner, underrated player as well. So, uh, yeah, Swan Districts no doubt have their, their work cut out. They'll be tested, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the back line probably is lacking a bit of depth as well. That's my only concern for the Swans, you know, that if that back line is under a lot of pressure and is conceding goals left, right and centre, then they're going to have a tough day because that East Fremantle forward line usually is very potent. You know, you talk about, you know, John O'Marsh, uh, Cody Leggett as well. Cody Leggett, uh, obviously a very prolific forward. Um, you also talk about Luke English. He can shift up the ground and kick a couple of goals as well. So that's a big question mark that uh, only the players will be able to answer on Sunday afternoon. And Swans haven't won against the Sharks since 2021. So uh, they'll be looking to break that drought. I don't think that comes over them too much, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, you'd, you'd like to turn that around because they have have been able to have the wood over there, their rivals. And the last two encounters over there at Steel Blue Oval between the two teams has been very, very close. Round 2, 2022, East Fremantle got up by nine points and the Sharks would do so again by four in round two of last year. Could we see another Steel Blue Oval thriller? Yeah, would not be surprised one bit if this does go down to the wire. So let's hope it does from a, from a uh, spectator point of view. It's going to be an absolute beauty there on Sunday afternoon. Who wins? Yeah, I have to lean towards East Fremantle. I think they're just going to be so eager to bounce back off that Eagles shock loss. So um, that being in mind, I think Swans can, can give it to them. And, you know, Swans, the challenge for them, can they play four quarters? You know, we've been, they've been able to do it for a half. They've been able to do it for three quarters with the best, you know, against the Roars. But this is crunch time now. And, uh, you know, against the reigning premiers, it's um, no probably better way to measure yourself. No other option for East Fremantle than to give Swan Districts a hammering. You know, even though I will say Swans will be competitive for three quarters. But East from Adelaide, they've got to dish out a hammering. You know, I think they're going to take that fire and anger from that loss to the West Coast Eagles and take it out on the Swans at Steel Blue Oval. That, that's the only way they can do it. Have to make Th- a statement. They've got to play four quarters of aggressive footy because what we saw against the West Coast Eagles was absolutely ordinary. They expected things to happen. I said it before and I'll say it again. They expected things to happen and it didn't. They've got to put in the effort. And if they do, if they get get a big win over Swan Districts, then that's going to turn their form around, especially with the um, penalty that they had imposed on them during the offseason. There's extra pressure on them. They've got to get the results and they've got to get those results now. So East from there's no other option. They've got to have a big win. They can't take the Swans lightly as well. You know, That's sometimes right. when you're coming up against a less opposition at the Eagles, you tend to take things lightly, a mindset thing. So uh, they have to be sharp with their focus right from uh, the first ball up. That's all the games in round five. It's going to be an absorbing round. And here is how you can win, win big at the Y. Win. 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 Almost a Win. Win. It's win-win at the Waffle. Great footy, food and entertainment. Find out more at waffle.com.au. Exciting three games, isn't it? A lot of big win-wins for the fans that get down to the game. Support your team. This Anzac Day round, it is going to be a ripper. Yeah, spread across a few days as well. So, uh, you know, the option to go to more than one game for all fans. Absolutely. And, of course, a big opportunity for fans of all clubs and also of those that can't make it. You can check it out on the AFL app and, of course, on Channel 7 for West Perth and South Fremantle. Ethan, enjoy the weekend of football. It's going to be a ripper. I'll see you next Tuesday. You too. Have a good call. All right. All the best to your uh, you, and Ethan, and all the best to our listeners as well. Enjoy the Anzac Day weekend. It's going to be an absolute ripper weekend of football. Three games spread over four days. It's going to be sensational. We look forward to reviewing it all for you on Tuesday. See you then.